Hi guys, uh, my name is Bogdan and today I'm gonna do an introduction for flat lightning asset. Uh, so yeah, mm, we start with an empty scene. We only have a direction light which we don't actually need, so I'm gonna delete it. And uh, let's add some basic geometry that we're gonna use, like for example plane for the ground. Uh, and uh, I'll add um, two cubes just so we have something to play with. Okay. So um, let's begin by uh, creating a flat uh, lightning material that we can use. So go to a project create a uh, new material uh, let this name this ground it's gonna be the material for a ground and here in the shader we select flat lightning flat lightning this is the basic shader so we have here all the settings uh, basically this is to use vertex colors from the mesh, we don't need them. Uh, as you can see the basic setting is this um, lightning in the different uh, axes. So we have lightning facing the positive x, lightning facing negative x, same for y and z. So we can use or, f or six different lightnings or we can do symmetrical lightnings, which is only to use um, the same color for uh, faces that face X and face uh, negative X. Let's just uh, jump to here to an example and see how that works. So for the ground, we actually only care for the positive Y. So we can pick some nice color, let's say this one. And uh, we don't need the uh, texture for now. We can create the gradient, which is um, which is a gradient slash fog effect. Um, for example, uh, this is the space. Let's make it local space. Let's uh, go from black to whatever color object is painted, and let's begin uh, in let's say three. Oh no, that's too much. Okay, let's make the width one. Let's begin in zero. Width. Okay. Let me just say this thing. You have to play with the settings a bit. I think that zero point one maybe. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I forgot, this is the Y, we probably need the X coordinate, so um, this is the axis that we want our gradient to be displayed, this is over the Z axis, Y axis, or X, Y axis, or we can also have a free axis, so if we want it to be like that, Let's make it uh, and the width. Let's make it three. The width is how much do we want the Let's say we are going for something like that. The width is basically how much do we want the blending to be. That's good enough. Uh, light mapping. Uh, this we can provide a custom light map and select the channels and the shadow team, blah blah. But um, for now, uh, I'm gonna skip this part and keep it as We can use Unity light mapping, but this we will do the light mapping at the end. Uh, and this is the different light sources. Keep in mind, this is custom light sources. So in this shader. Um, we tell if you want to use uh, custom lights or that are provided with flat lighting. But we'll keep these settings for now enough. 
and the custom shadows also will keep them off. So for now, that's enough for a ground. Let's make our test cube. One, oops, and let's assign this one. So we have here our test cube. Let's select again the flat lighting and uh, let's see how can we do it. So let's select um, symmetrical so you can see the difference. You pick for the X axis is red for the Z axis. Right now we have blue, but we can have, for example, some blue. And for the Y axis, we'll pick some yellow. Okay, so we have this cube painted. As, as you can see, right now the positive Z is blue and the face that's facing negative Z is also blue. If we turn off symmetry, we get to choose negative Z as well. So we can choose some green. So now positive facing Z we have blue, negative facing Z we have green, and as well for the Y, negative Y, we can have some say red and for the negative x we can have some magenta so now we have on each side we have different colors basically this space what this thing means means is that um, the colors are assi assigned in world space for example if we rotate the cube you see that the colors actually interpolate and the colors actually change. So the face of the cube that was facing Z is not uh, that was facing X is not facing Z, for example. X is red, Z is blue. So if we turn the cube, they interpolate, and boom, we have again the colors. So with uh, more complex shapes. Uh, you can see that effect better. But if we don't want that, if we want um, the rotation to not affect the colors, the side colors, we assign it just local space. So what does mean? What this means is um, that the local space coordinates of the object are used. So uh, we cannot use the Unity Gizmo anymore because that's in word space. But uh, as you can see, when you I rotate the object, um, the colors the sides my time because it's in local space. So let's go back to symmetry. Let's uh, put that into and let's duplicate it and um, create this cube too. So now we have the two cubes and um, we'll start adding some Lightning. To add uh, lightning, go to the hierarchy, hierarchy and uh, let's create an ob empty object that will keep our, our lights. And basically, go, go into flat lighting, and we have um, three different uh, flat light sources we have directional, spot, and point. Let's begin with. Um, Directional, actually. <coughs> so here we have the directional light, and we actually can see with the gizmo that directional light is pointing directly towards the negative z. We can rotate that a bit, but as, as you can see, it does not affect our scene. So in order for our scene to be affected, we need to enable the Directional light in our um, materials. So, in order to do that, we select the ground material, and as you can see, light sources we turn on directional. So, as you can see, oops, sorry, this is ambient, <laughs> uh, we turn directional on. Boom. So, I can see now uh, our directional light affects the ground. We can actually pick some 
less intensive directional light for some something like that. We go to the material test cube 2. We turn on the directional light again. So now we receive directional light in test cube. And for test cube 1, directional light on. So now as we move around directional light, you can actually see directional light affects the object in the scene. The is real time uh, what this thing does is actually uh, it allows us dynamically to change the light color, uh, the light color of uh, the directional light during uh, gameplay uh, at a, a little bit additional cost. So if the light is always going to be static, we will leave that empty. Um, let's add some more lights. For example, the um, spotlight. Oops, let me select it. So again, the gizmos show us the cone radius of the spotlight. Let's rotate it 19 degrees. So we can see actually where the spotlight is and how much it's cast. So um, we, have, we have all these settings for spotlight, like light distances and color intensities, but uh, the default should be enough to see something also, although we don't see anything. And that's again, we have to enable that because uh, the material is optimized if we are not using spotlight, so we don't waste GPU time. So we go again in the ground and we enable spotlight. Ta -da! We can see our spotlight in on the ground. Let's just um, bring this to down. A bit so they are grounded but uh, actually the spotlight doesn't affect our cube again that's because our cubes don't have the spotlight enable so now as you can see we actually affect it's too bright so we'll go down and slide on the light is too bright so Surely that's the color, uh, here are the light intensity. So per each circle of uh, our light we have the intensity of that circle and the distance. So for example if I bring the third circle down, one is um, basically the, the whole radius. So if we bring the color intensity of the center of circle you see, it, we can go negative, so it doesn't show anything. We go only slightly. If you bring it that way, for example, we can see all three. Let's modify the color. Something yellowish. And we actually can change the distances, how much each circle affects. So let's leave it at that. That is good enough. And we can actually select smooth for the light to be smooth and perfectly uh, interpolated or we can have it flat and discrete. We'll leave it as that for now. So now our light fully affects our objects. Again, we have the real time. We'll keep it uh, static for now. And for example, if we duplicate this light we see that um, we can have two lights, but like it's pretty weird where they mix. So we can actually fix that by going into our ground material, and you see that we have light source blend. So right now we don't have any light source blending whatsoever, so each light is um, like painted over the previous light. But we actually can have um, a really nice uh, blending if we select multiple. So now these settings will override the light, the individual light setting. So we can have a nice blending. Let me just select it a bit. 
So, what this allows us to do is to have a nice blending between the lights. We, we still use the individual distances, so for example this could be very small. We still use the individual distances, but now we have a nice blending of the intensity circles. So that's not a neat feature. Point lights are exactly the same and are affected by the same settings. Let's go to the custom shadows. We can actually select the direction light and create a shadow projector which let's bring it to the parent and the rotation set it exactly as the parent rotation so what this thing does is create a camera that um, casts a shadow over our scene for example if you actually rotate the camera around so it's oops okay that's not good Oop, camera is there so let's imagine that's our directional light casting you can select the shadow color and here we have the bias and the shadow blur but as you can see we, again we don't see anything on the scene and that's because we actually don't have the receive and cast shadow so the ground shouldn't cast a shadow but it should receive a shadow so we enable it and the cubes should cast and receive Shot, should do both. Select this other cube. This should cast and receive. So now they cast nicely. Select this first cube, we can move it and see that your casting is received by the other cube. You can go and, for example, change the color of our lighting so again if we have an ambient light which is just a color flat color for the ground for example we can make it a little bit greenish something like that for example if we want but again, if we are not going to use something, some of the dynamic um, light sources or shallows, we always should uh, turn that setting off because it's more performant. And that's the introduction that I have planned for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching and see you again later.